Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this lesson. Today I am going to discuss Merchant of Venice, Act 2, Scene 6, which takes place at Venice, the street outside Shylock's house. So here I begin. And before that, let me ask you, have you subscribed to my channel? If you haven't, then please do. And also watch the video till end. So now let us start Act 2, Scene 6. This scene takes place at Venice, the street outside Shylock's house. Enter Graciano and Salerio as maskers. So they have got ready for the mask procession. So they have come and both Graciano and Salerio are in front of Shylock's house and they are waiting for Lorenzo. This scene is important not only from the exam point of view but also from the drama point of view. Graciano. This is the penthouse under which Lorenzo desires us to make a stand. So Graciano says this is the portico or the shelter overhead just under the balcony where Lorenzo desired us to meet and stand. Salerio. His hour is almost past. So Salerio says that the time which he had appointed that is already gone. That means Lorenzo has not come on time. And now, some of the lines will be really important. Graciano. And it is marvel and he out dwells his hours for lovers ever run before the clock. So Graciano finds it strange that Lorenzo should come late. Why? Because lovers always come before time. He is looking at the watch waiting for other person. Salerio. Oh, ten times faster, Venus pigeons fly to see love's bonds new made. Then they are wont to keep obliged faith unforfeited. So Salerio says, yes, the pigeons which pull the chariot of the love birds, Venus, they fly ten times faster when it is a case of new love. That is, when the love affair is a new one, then the lovers come much before time. But when it is a case of old love, obligations from being broken, then they are not so fast. So that means keeping the promise is made in the case of old love. At that time, the pigeons of Venus, they are not so fast. So when they are all ten times, Faster when it is a new love. And then the next speech is very important. Graciano. That ever holds who rises from a feast with that keen appetite that he sits down. Where is the horse that doth untrade again his tedious measures with the unbated fire that he did pace them first? All things that are, are with more spirit chased than enjoyed. How, like a younger or a prodigal, the sacrifice, the scarfed bark puts from her native bay, hugged and embraced by the stump and wind, how like the prodigal doth she return, with overweathered ribs and ragged sails, lean, rent, and beggared by the stamped wind. So Graciano says that, yes, that is always the case and look, there are some important points in it. And the first one is, who rises from the feast with that keen appetite that he sits down. Suppose you have gone to attend the feast when you sit at the table and you have and you are very young, hungry after you have finished that when you get up from the table do you have the same appetite no it is not possible so who rises from a feast with that keen appetite that he sits down the so when he sat down the appetite which he had and the appetite which he had and when he gets up, he doesn't have the same appetite. 
So this question is a rhetoric question. It is not asking you for any answer. Rather, it is implied that no one rises from a feast with that appetite that he sits down. Where is a horse that doth untraded again? His tedious measures with the unbated fire that he did pace them first. Then again another rhetoric question when he is asking where is that horse which can cover the same distance that it has already done with the same pace with which he had started his journey. Suppose a horse starts its first round and when it is running its first round the speed with which it runs will it have the same speed or the same energy when it starts its second round? No, it is not possible. It will be exhausted so the second round won't be as fast as the first one. All things that are are with more spirit chased than enjoyed. So in all things there is more pleasure in chasing something, in pursuing something rather than in getting it so are with more spirit chased than enjoyed. So you will find more happiness in chasing something than attaining it. Suppose you want something from your father. Maybe you are asking for some new cell phone or something and your father says not now. So you keep on asking your father for the cell phone. And he says, okay, I'll give you after two months later. Then you keep on counting till your two months are over. And when you're chasing something in order to get it, then you have all the pleasure. And after you get it, do you have the same pleasure? The day you get it, you are very happy. But few months later, you don't have the same passion for it for it as you had it before you got it that is what graciano is trying to tell however how like a younger or prodigal the scarfed bark puts from the native bay hugged and impressed by the stampet wind how like the prodigal doth she return with with over weathered ribs and ragged sails, lean, rent, and baggered by the stumped wind. By the stumped wind. Suppose when you, when a ship starts, when its native place, it is well decorated and looks so splendid, but it meets a storm on its way, and then the sail and the mast, they are all damaged and when it returns to its native place does she look the same as she had started its journey from the native place that is from its show no just think of the titanic this is the best example if you have seen the titanic you might be remembering that seen when the titanic was started on its maiden white house how splendid it looked, but once it struck the glacier, no need to return to the native shore also. Did it look th like the same one? It didn't. So that is also the case of a prodigal Christian, not just Bassanio. It was a prodigal Christian in the Bible. Remember, when he had started out from his native port, after taking out his share of property, his ship well decorated and it had all his, he had his friends and his women and everything. But when he returned after having become a beggar, did he look the same? No, he looked like a beggar, clothes torn and not having anything, neither friend neither women nor the ship. Like a prodigal son, she leaves home rich, 
but returns in a state of bankruptcy. She is a beaten and battered by the playful wind. Enter Lorenzo Salario. Here comes Lorenzo, more of his hereafter. So Salario says, here comes Lorenzo, more of this hereafter means to say that Lorenzo has come, we will talk about this later. Lorenzo, sweet friends, your patience for my long abode. Not I, but my affairs have made you wait. When you shall please to play the thieves for wives, I'll watch as long for you then approach. Here dwells my father in my father, Jew. Ho, oh, who is within? So Lorenzo says that he is late. He apologizes with his friends and is telling, Please be patient, my friends. I am not responsible for the delay. But please forgive me as the work which I had in hand is responsible for my delay. And when you also try to plan to elope with your lovers or with your wives, then I will also wait for you as long as you have been waiting for me. And then he says, come here, dwell, my father-in-law, the Jew. And then he calls out, who is inside? Jessica, who are you? Tell me, for more certainty, I'll bet I'll swear that I do not know your tongue. So Jessica says, he, she says, casement below opens. And then she says that she's asking. Jessica is asking. The window opens above the door. And Jessica leans out. She is in a boy's dress. Yes, you remember that she had said that she would be wearing a boy's dress and she had already managed a page boy's dress or uniform. So she is leaning out from the window to which her father had told her not to do so. Who are you tell me for more certainty? I'll bet I'll swear that I do not know your tongue. So though she knows it's Lorenzo, hearing his voice, but she does speak. Please tell me, who are you? So that I can be more certain. Although I swear that I know your voice. Lorenzo and thy love. So Lorenzo says, I am Lorenzo. Your love, Jessica. Lorenzo, certain. And my love, indeed. For who love I so much? And now who knows but you, Lorenzo, whether I am yours? So Jessica says, now Jessica hears him for the second time. And she says that, yes, I am certain it is my Lorenzo and my love also. Whom I love so much is a rhetoric question. As she means to say that, there is no one whom I love so much as Lorenzo. But you, Lorenzo, whether I am yours, Lorenzo, heaven and thy thoughts are witness, and thou art. So Lorenzo says, heaven knows that I am your love, and your thoughts also know very well that I am your love, Jessica. From the balcony, from the balcony, dropped some casket, a box full of jackets and rich jewels, Jessica. Here, catch this. It is worth the pains. I am glad it's night. You do not look off on me, for I am much ashamed for my exchange. But love is blind, and lovers cannot see the pretty follies that themselves commit. For if they could, Cupid himself would blush to see me thus transformed to a boy. Jessica lowers the casket and drops it. And Lorenzo catches it. Jessica says she is glad that it is night because in the darkness of the night she will be hidden. She won't be revealed or exposed because she is wearing the dress of a boy. 
and in those days it was not done so she says i am really happy that you can't that you cannot have a look at me because i am ashamed of the dress i am wearing so she had exchanged her dress as a page boy and she is a girl so she is ashamed of this exchange but she says that love is blind and lovers cannot see those small foolish acts which they commit because if they could even cupid would be ashamed by seeing me transformed into a boy here cupid means the son of venus and he is called the prince of love he is blind and he has a bow and arrow in his hand and whoever he shoots the they fall in love with each other but love is blind and lovers cannot see the little act of foolishness the commit if the lovers can see then even cupid who is blind would blush to see me dressed as a boy lorenzo descend for you much by my torch bearer so lorenzo say descend for you must be my torch bearer so he tells her to come down remember he had told graciano that fair jessica would be her torch bearer so he tells her now about this jessica what must i hold a candle to my shames they in themselves good suit are too too light why it's an office of discovery love and i should be obscured so jessica says what should i carry a torch to reveal my shameful dress my shame is already apparent that act would reveal me my love when i ought to be disguised i want to keep myself as much hidden as possible and you are talking of exposing me so do i have to hold the torch light to show my shameful dress that she is wearing it is quite embarrassed the dress is really very revealing it is too apparent and if i hold a light in front of me and the torch bearer would be required to hold a light so that would show me exposed and rather i should be hidden so what does lorenzo say so lorenzo says so are you sweet even in the lovely garnish a boy but come at once for the close night dot play the run away and we are stayed for at bassanio's feast so lorenzo is a lover so he says even in the lovely dress of a boy so also you are hidden but come down at once because the night is passing fast and we are expected at bassanio's feast jessica i will make fast the doors and gild myself with some more ducats and be with you straight jessica says i lock the door and take some more ducats and then i'll join you so she goes graciano now my by my hood a gentle and no jew so graciano he says he swearing by his head where and says she can't be a jew she has to be a gentle that means a christian lorenzo be shrew me but i love her heartily for she is wise if i can judge her and fair she is if that mine eyes be true and true she is as she hath proved herself and therefore like herself wise fair and true shall be the place in my constant soul so now lorenzo says you may curse me but i do love her heartily that means lover loves her a lot why does she lo- why does she love her because she is wise if i have judged her correctly that is that if my judgment is good then she is wise if my eyes can show me correctly then she is beautiful so she is wise and beautiful she is true as she has proved herself to be loyal by robbing her father and agreeing to elope with me as she has three qualities wisdom 
beauty and honesty she will always remember remain in my heart now jessica comes loves 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 looks not with my eyes but with the mind and therefore winked cupid is painted blind jessica what art thou come o gentleman away are masking maids by this time for us a stay so jessica says so you have come gentleman have come down let's proceed our mask companion who are to join the mask processions they are already waiting for us so these people leave only prashano is left enter antonio antonio who's there graciano signal gracia antonio antonio fi fi graciano where are all the rest it's 9 o'clock our friends are all stay for you no mass tonight the wind has come about bassenio presently will go abroad aboard i have sent 20 out to seek for you antonio say shame on you graciano where are the rest so it means graciano is late so he says this shame on you graciano because he is late it is already 9 o'clock and all the friends are waiting for you and he gives this information that there won't be any mass so the mass procession had been cancelled so there won't be any mass procession as the favorable wind has come before time so bassiano will have to cut short his plans and start immediately so he will come he will be soon going to, to board the ship and i have sent 20 people to search and find you out why because graciano is supposed to accompany bassiano that is why he had sent 20 person to search for him graciano i'm glad on it a desire no more delight than to be under sail and gone tonight so graciano is very happy and that he will soon be accompanying bassenio and le- and leaving venice for belmont so he says that i'm glad on it i desire no more delight that is i do not need any more pleasure than to be sending than to be under sailing and gone tonight that is leaving this place and going actually we don't know why graciano is so eager to go we are not told about narissa having any feelings for him as graciano is going to belmont for the first time earlier it was only bassiano who had gone to belmont with the duke of montferrat so his so earnest desire to go there to belmont is not known so this is where act 2 scene 6 comes to an end i hope you should not find any problem in understanding this scene as this is also an easy scene in this scene the main thing you should remember is the elopement of jessica the cancellation of the mass procession due to the favorable wind coming before time and bassiano proceeding for belmont along with graciano so dear children with these words i end my lesson hope this lesson will be beneficial for you in your study watch this video till end for more score in your exam do like and share with your friends thank you for watching this video